Hello, Chemistry 12. This is Mr. Chan again. And today what I wanted to do was go over a couple of questions, maybe two or three questions in regards to how would you approach a buffer? Now, question number one would be a typical situation where you would have to identify a buffer scenario. So which of the following are buffers? Now, when you take a look, A, B, C, and D give you four different combinations. Now, when you take a look, at the answers, which is on the bottom of the page, it says A is no, B and C are yes, and D is no. Because what you wanna do is take a look at what is the combination? Why would A and D be no? Because you take a look, is it a weak acid and it's conjugate base salt? And in this case, you might say, oh, Mr. Chan, there's, you know, I see NO3, right? I see NO3 here and you have HNO3. They're conjugate pairs, yes. But in this particular case, what happens is the HNO3 is a strong acid, okay? So it is unable to form a buffer situation. Now, why is D a no is because Sodium carbonate and sodium phosphate are not conjugate pairs, okay? So something as simple as that is, do you understand what the definition of an acid or a base is, okay? Now, another one would be an example of a typical question that you would be seeing. So let me give you one here. So it says a buffer solution is formed containing 375 mils of 5 molarity acetic acid and 245 mils of 5 molar sodium acetate. Calculate the following. So what you want to do is calculate the pH of a buffer solution. Now, so what you want to do, first of all, is you have, you have let's see, CH3. COOH plus water would be in equilibrium with CH3, COO minus one, and H3O plus. Now, what you want to do is you can set up again, if you want, you can set up the ice table. Okay, and I'm going to show you something a little bit later on. Okay. Now, so what I'm going to do is five times 375 divided by I get an initial concentration of 3.024 molarity. Now, remember, because I am mixing two solutions together, I have to do the dilutions. Okay? So the acetate ion would be two, 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 and he's five, five, eight, three, four, five. I get 1.976 molarity. This would be zero. This would be minus X plus X plus X. This would be 3.024 molarity, oopsie, minus X. This is 1.976 plus X plus X. Now, you could set this up just like what you had done before. So you go Ka is equal to concentration of CH3, COO minus one concentration of H3O plus all over concentration of, uh, what is it? CH3COOH, oopsie. Okay. If I look at the solubility, uh, my acid base chart, acetic acid, CH3COOH, 1.8 times 10 to the negative five, Okay, so there's my buffers. 
well, for example, so this would be 1.8 times 10 to negative five is equal to one point, whoopsie, 1 1.976 plus X times X all over 3.024 minus X. Okay, now in this case, again, to make your life easy, you can ignore the X, okay? So you have 1.8 E to negative five times 3.024 divided by 1.976. And you should get an X value is equal to 2.75 times 10 to the negative five. And then you have a pH is equal to 4.56. Now, some of you might say, Mr. Chan, could I have just plugged in the values into this equation here? Yes, you could have. You could have had the H3O plus times the Ka and then the ratio of the two ion concentrations, and you would have gotten exactly the same answer, okay? I just decided to follow the rules of ice table and that sort of stuff, okay? Now, question number, so this is for A, okay? So you have question A. Question B says, calculate the change in pH 1.001 mole of solid sodium hydroxide is added to the buffer solution. Now, because you're reacting it with the base, okay? So what's going to happen is the acid will react with it. So in this case, so for B, the sodium hydroxide will react with the acid in the buffer solution to produce sodium acetate and water. Okay, so if this is 0 0.0010 moles, this will go down by 0 0.00010 mole, and this will go up by 0 0.0010 mole because it's produced. Yeah? Okay. Now, so in this case, since it went down by 0 0.0010 moles, if we divide it by the volume, of 0 0.620 liters, 0 0.620 liters. So we have 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.62. So I have 1.61 times 10 to the negative three molarity, that's minus. This side will go up by 1.61 times 10 to the negative three molarity. Now, you might say, well, what do I do with these two numbers? Well, it affects the, e the concentration of the uh, acid and the ions initially again. So if we were to rewrite the equation now, So again, we have CH3 going back to our equilibrium plus H2O is in equilibrium with CH3 COO minus one and H3O plus. The initial concentration now in this case would be minus 3.024. So here would be 3.022 molarity. 
And here you would have 1.976 plus 1.61e negative 3. So here I would get 1.978 molarity. This would be 0. Again, minus x plus x plus x. 3.022 minus x. 1.978 plus x, x. Now, again, you can set it up into your ice table, your Ka expression, okay? So you have Ka, okay? Or what I will do is I will go concentration of H3O plus is equal to the Ka times concentration of my acid over concentration of the conjugate base ion. So what you have is 1.8 times 10 to negative five times 3.022 all over 1.978. Okay, uh, let's do that times times three point zero two two. I get two point seven five times ten to negative five, and then the pH is four point five six. Notice the pH doesn't change very much. It pretty much stays the same. Okay. Okay, very little. And that's because what you have is you have a small amount of base that's added it's absorbed by the acid in the buffer system. And notice the ratio doesn't change very much. You look at the ratio here, is pretty much almost exactly the same as the ratio here. I'm just gonna highlight it differently. So your ratio hasn't changed very much, so your pH doesn't change very much, okay? Now, if you take a look in your Zoom doll text, okay, in your Zoom doll reading, they do talk about buffered solutions, okay? And they do go through an example exactly the same that I went through with you, okay? And they do talk about what's happening in regards to when you add an acid or a base to it. Okay, but the one thing I want you to focus on is as you're going through a page, I believe seven, eight, yep, they go through exactly how it go, how to work it through. Okay. The one thing they wanted to do is this. There's something they introduced you to is on page 720 is just called the Henderson Hasselbach equation. So what is the Henderson Hasselbach equation? is basically you take the negative log of the equation of that K expression that I gave you, okay? And what you do is just take the negative log of everything and you basically get the same thing, okay? So on page 720, 721, they talk about this thing called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, all right? So basically it is this, rearrangement constant, but what they've done is they've taken the pH, pKa, and then the inverse negative log of this ratio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is basically it. And what I can do is I'll give you your homework a little bit later on. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.